Hey everyone, it's Bea Devine and hopefully this is going to work out really well and you're going to be able to hear me. I'm doing this in a little bit of a different way, but I have some really, really important news and I hope that you will listen to this whole recording all the way through. First of all, uh, we are getting ready for Halloween as I speak and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys uh, all through the week this week uh, with different things that I'm doing and also on the 30th we're having a huge Halloween day so I uh, hope to see you there. And also I am doing the 2022 readings and you can now get those and uh, receive a discount also. I will put uh, links in the comments etc for you all. But the reason I wanted to talk to you today is about 2022 in itself. And as I was doing some charts, um, I've been doing a lot of work on 2022 because I like to give you guys extra information when you get your reading. So you'll get an astrological chart, chart you'll get a, a Vedic chart that I do, and uh, you'll also get like an overall for the year. You'll get some declarations, you'll get some attunements, etc. And then you get a breakdown of each month. So I'm going through the planetary energy for next year. And holy wow. Okay, so I'm going to be reading from several different places um, about Pluto's return uh, in the USA specifically, um, which will be on February 20th, 2022 which actually happens to be my husband's and I, <laughs> it's our anniversary as well. But this is extremely important because the last time that this happened was when the Declaration of Independence for the United States was written. Other countries have also already had uh, a Pluto return because it comes about every uh, 250 years. It's a slow moving planet. And we have been in its kind of energy uh, a little bit since 2008. So I want you to keep that in mind. What you were doing in 2008, what things started to change for you. And uh, 2022, obviously, we are about to hit into this next year. Okay, and I'm going to explain what this Pluto energy will mean for all of us. And also when it's come before in other countries, what it's actually meant for them. Because Pluto in itself is the planet of the underworld, shakes things up, brings things, tears things down. And because it's going to be in Capricorn, it's going to be about governments. It's going to be about laws. It's going to be about secret societies. It's going to be about secret agendas. Nobody is going to be <laughs> able to get away with what they've been getting away with. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. There's going to be an extreme exposure. Now, I want to explain it also um, more precisely. Okay. So uh, I've got a few different reference points that I'm going with. Um, but you can get most of this uh, information from Forever Conscious, uh, foreverconsciousness.com. Okay, so let me read to you uh, so I don't mess anything up. I want to get it right uh, the first time. Okay. So as I said, Pluto's energy is subtle and it's slow moving. It takes many years for it to weave its magic. But when it is through with us, we feel reborn, renewed, and recreated in some way. Pluto return in the USA. The United States was officially experienced its Pluto return from 2022 to 2024, and we've been in the shadows of it since 2008. We are already feeling some of these effects. Pluto is going to bring a revolution of sorts. Okay, seems that whatever intention was set for this country, what intention was set for this country in 1776? Now, this is when we are, we are talking about the birth of the United States from the time of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, 
1776, July 4th, as we know. And this is when Pluto was in influence, okay? That's the last time it was there. It was right when everything changed for the United States. It looked like it was going to, you know, remain under the crown. Everybody, it, you know, Washington was losing battles left, right, and center, okay? And then all of a sudden, everything changed, okay? Truth came forward, change started to happen. Now, we don't want to discount who was here before, and of course, there was a lot of things that happened uh, pre this time. But for the birthing of the nation, um, as they say, 1776 was the last time. Now, so whatever intention, as I said, was set for this country back on July 4th, 1776, it's going to be revisited. It's got no choice. Pluto is going to ask what needs to change, what needs to be transformed, and what needs to be honoured. Okay. We will be forced to look back to see whether the original uh, intention set for this country is still being upheld. There's a lot of things that are changing right now. There's things that had to change for the better, like females being able to vote and all the different things that have happened over the years that are, had to come into play. But there's also things that are changing that are not good for us, losing our freedoms, etc. We'll, we will be forced to look back and see whether the original intention set for this country is still being upheld or if anything needs to change. We will be forced to look back and readjust in some way before we can move forward. We may even have to revisit some of the energies that brought about the creation and need for the Declaration of Independence as well. Why was there a need for that to happen? The Declaration of Independence. Because Pluto return is occurring in the sign of Capricorn, there will be a spotlight. This is what Capricorn governs. Government, big business, authority figures, and essentially anyone uh, in a position of great power. Okay. A Pluto return in Capricorn can manifest as the crumbling of the government or an established hierarchy, but it can also be the building excuse me, the building of a new one. When anything's important and I'm starting to channel stuff, I start to get the hiccups and all kinds of things. So I've just got to go with it. It can lead to deep and lasting changes in the way that the country is run and governed and the rules that citizens choose to abide by. Pursuit of happiness, freedom for all and justice for all, right? This energy is like the dark, dark night of the soul of the country. It challenges the US to face up to its dark side and to expose any corruption. How long have I been saying the light has won? How long have I said, you know, there's going to be no choice. There's so much light on this planet that all of the nasty is trying to hang on as much as it can. And it looks worse. The more that they are trying doesn't matter who it is. Okay, so we have to remedy the past, any mistakes that were there also, some things that weren't correct, so that we can create a brighter future that's fair for everyone, people's rights, people's freedoms to choose. All right, and that means anything across the board. It doesn't matter. You, you choose to um, marry who you want to marry, live where you want to live, choose to vaccinate or not, choose to have an abortion or not. Like, I'm sorry, but it's people need a choice and it has to be on every level. It can't be just what, what, you, what, you, what you like about freedom. It has to be everything. So I just think it's a person's choice and they have to be able to do that. And it, we don't like everything that someone chooses. Well, so what? You know, we, it's not about business, what anyone else is doing. 
in their life, but you know, whatever it is that they want to choose, that's none of my business, definitely. And good luck to you, <laughs> whatever you're doing. Fantastic. You made a choice. Keep pushing ahead, you know? So uh, Pluto return can expose shadows. It's also an incredibly powerful transit that can help any country rise up to its fullest potential. When the Pluto return is officially completed, it will be like the Phoenix rising from the ashes, stronger and more awakened than before. So uh, while the US will wrap up this uh, return by 2024, uh, due to its slow mo uh, movements, it will take until 2028 to truly see all that's occurred because of it, but it starts next year. We're in the shadows of it now. You may be seeing things now changing. Okay, so uh, when 2028 comes, it leaves, Pluto leaves the sign of Capricorn for good, okay? So some of the predictions about this, I'm going to read to you a little bit more uh, as well. So while it's difficult to predict exactly what's going to happen, here is what we may see, plus what has unfolded as other countries have experienced their own Pluto returns, and I'll get into that as well, what happens. So interesting, right? There will be major changes in the law, or different laws. There'll be a shift in the government structure. There will be exposure of deep corruption, and maybe this is what causes a shift in the government structure. There will be a need to heal the past, Things that have happened to people have been atrocious, okay? And, and anybody who has committed um, a heinous act against another person, whatever they have done, whatever color they are, whatever creed they are, doesn't matter who they are. You're a person, you've done something wrong, you should be punished to the, to the full extent of the law, you know, however they want to do that, <laughs> right? It's people. It's people that need to be punished for what they've done wrong. Um, and it will happen. The need to uh, heal the past. Uh, there will be some power struggles, of course. It's what happens. There will be conflicts with other countries. People aren't going to like us if we're starting to get our self back together. There's going to be, you know, agreements or partnerships with other countries as well. It's not all going to be bad or it's not all going to be, you know, um, because what I'm tired of is everybody being so negative about the future. You know, everybody moaning every single day. Oh, we've got to do this now. Oh, they've changed this now. Oh, this is happening now. How is that helping your future to be better? Right? So this is the thing that's going, it's a planetary thing. This is a planet, Pluto. And it's going to be sitting in our orbit for the first time since 1776. And what happened then? Everything changed. What's going to happen now? Could be a few things, but I want to explain what's happened to other countries. Uh, some have had three returns. Okay. Agreements, partnerships, with other, leaving agreements and partnerships with other countries. If they've just been bad for us, why are we still in them? Changes or an overhaul of the banking and the economy. Okay. I personally don't think anyone should know your business in the bank, not the president either. So I don't agree with some of the things in this new bill. Uh, maybe all that will change. Um, <clears throat> changes or an overhaul when it comes to big business as well. You know, big tech. There needs to be an overhaul there. Unconventional leaders, death or overthrowing of leaders. This could all happen. Changing of allies, rise of independence, rebalancing power dynamics. Ultimately, a Pluto return is a very eye-opening, transformative, dark night of the soul experience. While it does stir things that may be uncomfortable, Okay, hey, we've, we've already gone through two years of uh, PSYOPs, so, you know, whatever. If it's going to help, 
you know, it might get worse for a little bit better and before it gets better, so be it. We will all be able to function. Why? Because we have, one thing is, is that we have this powerful forward motion of our own sovereignty. When you give up your sovereignty and give in to fear, you will be scattering around. You won't know what to do. You'll be freaking out. Well, when you're in your sovereignty, as a sovereign being of light, as I always say to you, when you own it, no one can take that away from you unless you give it to them. Okay. And I think we should be arm in arm here. No more divisions. Who cares what anybody else wants to believe in, what church they go to, what color they are, where they've come from. We all were built on coming from other places. We we're all built from a past life history of God knows what. You know, nobody's perfect. But are we stronger together? Definitely. Did the government know that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, it can pave the way to create a more balanced, fair and just country, which is what they were trying to do before, where we all feel loved, welcomed, respected and equal. Okay. Now, we are talking about what they call the birth of the United States because of the uh, Declaration of Independence doesn't mean that the, it doesn't acknowledge the people that were already here. Okay, so it goes right back into their energy as well and things that were occurring then. All right. But uh, for now, we're sort of looking just in this one area and also we want to look at other countries, okay, that have the Pluto return here. Um, so key shifts in a country's destiny. All right, so I've got a whole lot of dates there now. Just one moment. Okay. So Pluto it has been in Capricorn from 2008 and will continue to be it until 2024. So here it's bringing radical transformation in major structures of society, such as government, big businesses, big tech, while redesigning the way we use power on a social level through hierarchy and workforce organization. When Pluto first entered Capricorn in 2008, there was the largest recession after the Great Depression. So now as the Lord of the Underworld is getting closer to the US natal Pluto, we're facing the continuation of that crisis on multiple levels. In the hardworking ethical sign of Capricorn, this Pluto return is about sustained effort, integrity and clear identity fueled by a process of leaving corruption, leaving power abuse and discrimination behind how many people are leaving their jobs right now because of what's going on with mandates, etc. How many people are standing up for themselves and saying, no, I don't want to do this experiment. I'm sick of 2019 and the, the C word that, that's been going around. We need to learn to live with it. How many people do you know saying this? Right? So states were born on the 4th of July, 1776 at the signing of the Declaration of Independence. This is where we're taking it from as being the last time, look what happened. The last time Pluto was stationed right here. Uh, with the Cancer Sun, an Aquarius moon and a Sagittarius ascendant, the USA has its natal Pluto in the second house of finances and resources. So this is a telling for a nation that was built from scratch by people who wanted a different and better life for themselves. I get really hot about this because my history is, is here. I could even be, you know, we are our ancestors, right? Because there's something in, that puts, I had to tell you guys this anyway. I got a fire under me right now. Anyway, so on uh, February 19, uh, 2022, Pluto will conjunct the country's natal Pluto for the first time ever, marking a time of intense transformation in the areas represented by Capricorn because it's sitting in Capricorn. When a planet sits in a zodiac sign, you have not only what the planet's doing and what its normal energy is, but then 
what the what the zodiac sign represents so you got the two of them working together okay so the capricorn is all about uh government hard work institutions rules regulations right and the second house which is interesting is about the finances right natural resources values and attitudes so this process has been set in motion starting with this year um uh sorry it started the motion sort of started in 2019 because this is when this was written <laughs> something that we can clearly feel uh due to uh c19 let me just call it capricorn in the second house is a mature steady type of energy so during these years we'll be faced with challenges especially in the areas of money career and reputation how many people have been kicked off or put into facebook jail how many people are suppressed on youtube and social media how many people were kicked off completely off of their platforms you know in an unjust and ridiculous way right doesn't matter you know the the, the principles have got to be right you can't have freedom for one type of um belief and that's okay but you can't have all these others otherwise we just end up being completely the opposite of what i think we all want to be okay you, you know you can't have it both ways um so since the second house rules values and attitudes uh, subsequent things that have been brought to light uh, things can no longer be kept under the rug while people are suffering from the effect, effects of ignorance and hate while people are suffering this is this can't continue it'll things will be brought to light to change things okay so pluto brings repressed material back to the conscious mind so during these years, we're confronted with pain, abuse and discrimination that's been piling up in the country's collective for the last 247 years. History can no longer be silent, not when it comes to matters of land, property, resources, which is the second house, right, financial stuff. And it's linked to privilege, judgment and power abuses. You know, people are just ripping off the system, ripping off people overstepping, you know, all that stuff. And we're now questioning the values that the country was built on, prompted by the explosive energy of Pluto, the planet that doesn't accept any compromises. So the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, the USA's Pluto return is amplified by a conjunction between transiting Saturn and Pluto. An astrological event associated with the transformation of current social structures, often through economic difficulties and restrictions. So Saturn ripens the karma associated with Pluto. Uh, so taboos, abuse, old wounds, and urges us to take responsibility for the damage done. In the second house, we can think of wounds linked to attachment, desire for money and power and, or harmful attitudes toward the natural world okay the last Saturn uh, Pluto conjunction was in 1982 what were you doing then what were you doing in 1982 the year some people weren't born I'm sorry uh the year when the U.S went into a recession and see and then 2008 it went into a recession right the start of the Pluto thing the fact that Saturn and Pluto mean serious business isn't an easy pill to swallow but this is the general vibe of our years. Things aren't easy. Hard times push us to work harder, to take responsibility for our own corner of the world, to shed toxic attitudes and attachments, and to focus on our long-term vision, even as the world as we know it is changing. Okay, because we just, we don't want to stand up for this crap. We just want to be left alone. People just want to be able to buy a home, Go live where they want to live in peace, right? Do what you want. Isn't that what this is supposed to be about? Why has it changed so much? I know there's been terrible things that have happened. Atrocity after atrocity. People who were supposed to be held accountable for their actions have not been held accountable. And this is what's driven everybody crazy. It won't be able to continue. Okay. 
And then there's something else that's really interesting that's happening. Now, just a, min a minute here. Okay, so you see how powerful this is. This is not just a little, okay, we're going to get a little thing going on. This is powerful. So Saturn uh, hit the USA's natal Pluto in February 2020. The month when C-19 started making itself known across the United States. In uh, February 2021, Saturn's conjunction with the US South Node of Karma continues a process of paying old debts and taking responsibility for what we've been sweeping under the rug until now. Basically, it's another wake up call. So we'll be facing the 2022 Pluto return based on how much we'll manage to process how much are we going to process and change the harmful realities that we've created until then? Now, Eris, this is something interesting as well. It's like Aries, but Eris, okay? And it squares off with Pluto and it brings destruction and rebirth. So uh, in the astrology of uh, Eris, Eris is the goddess of discord and triggers conflict, especially in the hot-blooded sign of Aries. Her lower aspect manifests as selfishness as a dog-eat-dog -dog mentality, squared to Pluto in corporate Capricorn. The moment of America's Pluto return, Eris warns against waging war to maximize our gains in the disadvantage of uh, others and against the conflict in general. Taking responsibility for our part of the problem and using conflict resolution tools will be paramount in the following years. Hostility won't get us anywhere, but it's possible for things to get worse before they get better if we keep reacting from a place of fear and separation. Pluto is a trauma and Eris is rage. So a lot of repressed anger about past and present injustice is coming to the surface. Haven't we seen this? We need to face our anger without lashing out against others. You know, hate doesn't make it, you know, someone hates you and you hate them back. Where's the, it's just hate. It's just more hate, right? But you've also been working on yourself and your own issues, your own inner uh, hate of the self, the own inner war that you've been raging inside with, the war that you've had inside of yourself for how many years? Nobody seems to know about it. But you deal with it all the time in anxieties and stresses, what people think and why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? life sucks and it's all hard for me and it's it's getting harder and what are this and uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. people have been doing this crazy crazy stress and as a collective we're all been picking up on it so the reason it's coming is because of pluto the reason it's there is the rage and the anger is there because of Eris. it's all squaring off with each other we, it has no choice but to affect us how it always has Okay, so we're recognizing how repaying violence and judgment with more of the same only keeps us stuck in this vicious circle. And it does. It's not helping. Two wrongs don't make a right. That was something I learned as a kid, didn't we? The Eris Pluto square is heavy, but we can face it with responsibility for our own spirit. Finding ways to channel hurt and anger into actions that help build a different more open-hearted, more humane kind of society. So Pluto's opposite Mercury. And don't worry, I'm going to get into what happened in the other countries, but these are important too. You're starting to understand why you've been feeling the way you've been feeling, right? You understand why the C-19 came up, why everybody went into this transformational energy and panic why everything had to change legally, why government had to change, etc. Okay, so secretive Pluto opposing Mercury, the planet of communication. From 2017 to 2024 can make us prone 
to feeling paranoid, to feeling suspicious, like suspicious of people, right? Mistrusting authorities, very possibly with good reasons <laughs> as to what is being communicated directly to the population might not be the entire truth. Okay, because there's secrets. Okay, so there's communication secrets, get it? Where it's being told things, but it's not completely true. Taking our info from reliable sources and not falling for all of this crap is a must during these years. We have to learn who we can trust with information, right? There's certain people that are cracking at the seams right now around the globe and exposing themselves because they're so frustrated. And you're seeing it in Australia, seeing it in the UK, seeing it in France, seeing it in Europe, seeing it in the USA. So frustrated because things are coming out. You know, the truth will not be uncovered anymore. So um, since it's a long term process, um, we can expect things to get worse and they have been C19, uh, 2020, now in 2021, before they get better, especially as we're facing karmic consequences that can't be avoided. So it says here, success in anything we do will come through hard work, integrity, and seeing our shadow, seeing our own shadow side, admitting it before projecting the blame onto others. Take some responsibility for yourself. That's it. It's all you're responsible for is yourself. And uh, the ones who are still driven towards abuse by ego, by fear, and separation will go through a serious reality check. Okay. There's no way to run from karma with the Pluto return. And we might face a breakdown if we keep trying. However, in the long run, uh, Pluto return will bring America closer to its soul. The more greed, abuse and manipulation are uncovered, the easier it is to make conscious decisions, no longer allowing the wrong people and the wrong values to lead us. Being alive for the USA's first Pluto return can be fascinating, if a little terrifying experience, but we've already been through the worst of it, if you ask me. And this is what Pluto in Capricorn does best. He spins the world around so no stone is left unturned. And if we dare to leave behind the shadows of the past, we'll find new light. Oh, okay. Interesting, okay. All right, so here we go. <coughs> I want to talk about a little bit of some historical correlations as well. So you can see what happens when this Pluto comes around and these particular conjunctions, etc., happen. Uh, so you want to think, what was I doing in 2008? What was I doing in uh, 1982 if you were alive then? I know exactly what happened to me in 1982, but never mind. Um, and then we want to look at 2017. Was this the start for some of you of feeling like your numbers were going down if you're working online and all that sort of stuff? Did you feel like something had shifted then? Because I, that's I did. I certainly did. Something completely changed. Um, there were certain things that happened, and I'm going to go over it. Okay. So this is what Pluto represents, and I'm going to read it to you. All things hidden and secretive in society. The shadow of the collective. Sewerage workers and archaeologists to the more sinister level of the secret police, organized crime, all self-destructive ur urges and impulses, the principle of death and rebirth and the healing principle which forces the collective as an organic whole uh, to experience violent phases of self-healing in order to become well again. 
Pluto contains both the positive and negative aspect of the principle of reordering and rebirth inherent in all seeds. Pluto by transit brings up the hurt repressed, denied aspects of the sign and offers us an opportunity to renew these qualities. As Pluto regulates the cycles of nature in all senses, his presence by transit uh, brings us into accord that all things have their seasons. Everything must live and die, so it may be born again. Under his influence, we are meant to release things and allow them to die so we can invite the next cycle of birth into our lives. So here's some historical correlations. Now, this is the thing that I found. I was like, I was in it. Okay. So um, <laughs> the 248-year Pluto cycle offers us the slowest of the larger rhythms, uh, the others being Uranus and Neptune that regulate human society and the evolution of Earth and the biosphere. This current cycle commenced as he entered Aries in April 1982. So Pluto started to move into Aries in 19, uh, sorry, 1822, a time marking the end of an epoch as Napoleon was dismissed and the world awaited the Victorian uh, era and the birth of a new archetype, global expansionism and industrialism. Well, industrialization, sorry. So as he entered Cancer and formed the Waxing Development Square in 1912, the world was at a threshold of World War I, which saw the outcome of a new Europe where communism became a dominant force. And by the late 1920s, as uh, Uranus entered Aries for his new 84 year cycle the rise of the dictators with the outcome of war world ii as pluto then moved on into leo so as the outcome was happening pluto was moving into a new sign see Whew. okay so uh the opposition or halfway point came in 1971 as he began to enter into Libra. Every time he's entering into a planet, a thing, something happens. Big business took off with a bang. Corporate culture led industrialization toward its current zenith. It was also during the 70s that we were first warned of global warning, warming and the healing movement led by the 60s hippies began to offer alternative ideas for a safer and more spiritual humanity. Many of us decided to come in 60s, 70s, okay? Because it looked like, it looked good. <laughs> um, that was when, uh, there we go. So uh, as with all Plutonian phases, it often takes quite some time for the larger issues to be revealed and acted on. Remember, it's a really slow moving planet. It sits there for a while. Um, okay, so uh, so now as Pluto reaches his waning square in his cycle to himself, we enter a 16-year period as he commences his journey through Capricorn from, so, so this started from January 2008 until 2024. He returns to Aries uh, next in 20. 66. So the waning cycle, uh, sorry, the waning square offers the crisis of reorientation, where the results of Capricorn of the cycle are ready to bear fruit. So we will see stuff going on. At the same time as the cycle begins its descent toward completion, I hope that by seeing the dates involved here, you gain a sense of the larger scope involved in the Pluto cycle. So here we go, a little trip back through history. So Pluto was last in Capricorn 
it, from 1762 to 1778, a remarkable period during which a brave new world opened with the hallmark of exploration and innovation. This came after Pluto's journey, journey through the preceding sign of Sagittarius. Now, this uh, said it was in Sagittarius from 1748 to 1762. The great process of upheaval during this phase saw enlightenment in the core philosophies that underpinned society at that time. Sagittarius rules uh, the belief systems that stimulate the collective at any time. So during the Capricorn phase of the 1760s and 1770s, this enlightenment thought spread through the governing institutions with enormous ramifications both then and in the following decades. The War of Independence by the American colonies was the highlight of this period. Then from 1777 to 1798, as Pluto moved into the revolutionary sign of Aquarius, the French Revolution spelt the end of the plutocratic systems that had run Europe for 600 years as the democratic principles from ancient Greek times reasserted their timely humanistic message. As Aquarius rules all things technical and inventive, it was also no surprise that the Industrial Revolution also accompanied Pluto's transit through Aquarius. You see how how Pluto just it just changes everything whenever it's around. So it's interesting to note that it took nearly the whole period from when uh, Pluto first entered in uh, 1762, then the build up in 1765 when the British passed the Stamp Act to tax American colonies until the final few years in Capricorn for the War of Independence to become full blown. blown. So it completely, they started to tax everybody or wanted to. What happened? What are they trying to do now? Trying to implement new taxes. We've seen gas prices rise. We've seen the food go ridiculous. We've seen huge shortages. We've seen trucks not being able to pick things up. We've seen all of this and what's gonna happen? It's all going to change, okay? So um, until the final few years in Capricorn for the War of Independence to become full blown. So let's have a look at this, 1762. So even though we, we had this going on here, there was other things going on around the world and I kind of want to look at this too. 1762, Catherine the First dies succeeded by Peter III, succeeded by Catherine II, uh, or Catherine the Great. Whew. 1765, Bank of Prussia founded by Frederick the Great, Lord Nelson's boat Victory launched, British passed the Stamp Act to tax American colonies. Then it went this way. So one thing went this way, and then it went this way. 17. 69, the Duke of Wellington was born. 1766, Mason-Dixon line created to separate free from slave regions in the United States. 1767, Andrew Jackson and John Quincy Adams were born, but future US presidents, of course. Chaos was happening in India. Robert Clive um, uh, leaves India. 1768, James Cook, Captain Cook, set sail for the first circumnavigation around the globe. The good old Captain Cook, eh? 1769, Napoleon was born at the same time the Duke of Wellington was born. The construction of the first steam road carriage, first lightning conductors on high buildings as well. 1770, 
Australia and New Zealand discovered and mapped by James Cook. But there was already Aboriginals in Australia that had been living there quite fine. Same as the United States. They were, all the Indians were living here quite fine. Okay. Boston Massacre happened in 1770, a brawl between civilians and troops. The birth of Beethoven, father of the classical musical era. Handel's Messiah was performed for the first time in a uh, first public restaurant in Paris. And the Industrial Revolution begins 1770. 1771, Russian conquest of the Crimea annexed from Poland. Um, Smithsonian Club, oh, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> Smithsonian Club for Engineers founded in London and the first spinning mill in England happened. 1773, the Boston Tea Party, first cast iron bridge in Colebrookdale. The waltz became fashionable in Vienna. 1774, Louis XV dies, succeeded by uh louis the uh 17 which was later beheaded in the french revolution 1775 paul revere dies um defeat of the british washington made commander of the american forces or commander-in-chief of the american forces james watt invents the steam engine and john turner english uh the classical painter was born Okay, there's just some things here. Now, the previous cycle, Pluto was in Capricorn between uh, January 1516 and December 1532. The previous decade of Pluto in Sagittarius gave rise to the Reformation and over the next decade and a half, the political outcomes of this incredibly important shift challenged the Catholic Church system that had been all powerful up until this time. England's Henry VIII, divorce of his Spanish Queen Catherine of Aragon, uh, led to the birth of the Church of England. And elsewhere in Europe, the Protestant factions grew in uh, ascendancy. Henry's autocratic rulership in his this phase is a powerful symbol of Pluto in Capricorn and set the tone for monarchs all through Europe for the whole of the following cycle. So what may we expect from this transit through Capricorn? All right, there's a lot of years there. Uh, 16 years it is, okay? So the USA was born in the 1770s, okay, with the Declaration of Independence. We've already explained that. And now it looks to go through the rebirth uh, as well. The very nature of the machinery that has made the USA the global superpower of post-World War II times is going to need a radical overhaul in the next decade or so. And this is a really old, um, this is a really old article. So um, and so they were talking about like 2008 and then 2018, etc. When America gets cold, the rest of us start sneezing, sneezing until uh, still holds true. It seems that despite the spin doctors and their version of life in the US, it appears that their basic internal social welfare systems have never been in worse shape. Add to this the nature of collective debt, which sees the average citizen in debt uh, in far greater measure, measure than their paycheck can cover. I've certainly noticed this all since I've lived here. And the reality of a global debt recession looms large in the years ahead. Um, and now let's top it off by noting that China is the USA's largest creditor. America has been broke for quite some time now, but nobody ever seems to mention it or consider it as a particular problem. Uh, then we have the North American Currency Union, a controversial proposal in which the three principal countries of North America, so Canada, the United States and Mexico, would share a common currency. The hypothetical currency for this union is sometimes referred as the Amero. Uh, it is a concept similar to the common European un union currency, the Euro. 
Conspiracy theorists contend that the governments of the US, Canada, and Mexico are already taking steps to implement such a currency. Who knows? Okay, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Remember, this was written a while ago. So, um, I also want to read, so it talks about the underground capitalist culture, the monarchy and royalty. Okay, will Queen Elizabeth hand over to Charles uh, with Pluto and Capricorn forming a trine in her son and uh, Charles's moon? Um, they, they said that that was supposed to happen in 2008, 2009, but she's still there. So um, a few more thoughts. So the next Pluto in Capricorn phase heralds both the Zenith and the coincidental breakdown of existing structures as the prelude to the next great technical revolution from 2024. Um, so as they say, we ain't seen nothing yet. That's one of the sayings. Apparently kids that were born 1995 through 2003 carry exceptional circuitry hardwired into their potential to innovate in ways uh, unimaginable to us now. Uh, some, some of the things that will happen will bring um, a lot of solutions that are needed and society, what society may need in the way of a revolution will be the result of the ideals and actions of the new groups of leaders about to rise from the ashes. So, uh, wow, could be a lot of things that are taking place. Um, I just want to have a look real quick here. This is for history. Okay, here we go. Woo, all right, so here we go. This fly ooh, is hanging around. Go away. Okay. So in 1217 to 18, Pluto conjunction is interesting. Uh, so the kings of England ruled more of France than the Capetian French kings. King John died in 1216 and managed to lose nearly all of it. Normandy, Brittany, Maine, Anjou. Apart from Aquitaine, which became Edward III base over a century later, when the English crown again revived its claims to its French lands. It is the holding of continental land that tied England to France uh, for over 400 years, since it was not just the crown that possessed overseas dominions, but it, uh, it also much of the English ruling class held dominion. So it also shaped English commerce through cities like Bordeaux, when the land and trade uh, ties were slowly cut, England and ultimately the rest of Britain drifted into new political, religious trade and cultural patterns. The final link, Calais, was lost under Mary I in 1558. Mary, Mary the Queen of Scots, right? So the future British Empire had its origins under her successor, Elizabeth I, the term ironically being first used by the astrologer John Dee. The early 1460s would have been the middle years of the Wars of the Roses, the Battle of Towton, uh, which was the bloodiest in English history, was fought in 1461. It was a period in which much of England's ancient Norman aristocracy wiped itself out in a civil war, eventually leaving the way open for the upstart Tudors and this is when you get Henry VIII, blah, blah, blah. However, the really significant change in the latter half of the 15th century was the fact that as a result of the 100 years war, the English crown had lost nearly all of its European continental possessions by 1453, apart from the Pass de Calais. This brought to an end a relationship that has started in the 11th century with the Norman conquest and had been developed by the Angevin dynasty in the central Middle Ages. Much is made of the English Reformation under Henry VIII as marking a shift of England's focus away from Europe towards the Atlantic and eventually a worldwide empire. But the reality is uh, that this development was in some way forced on the country by its physical expulsion of the English crown and aristocracy from its continental lands over 80 years before. 
every time there is this conjunction, there are major things that occur. The period 1709 to 10 falls slap bang in the middle of the wars of the Spanish succession. Uh, it was preceded by the 1707 Union of England and Scotland and the beginning of the Hanoverian dynasty. The wars against Louis um, XIV were the time when Britain first became a major world power linked to the development of its navy and the financial system that helped to pay for it. Thanks also to um, some mystic. Okay, so forget that bit. Okay, so there is a pattern to the Pluto returns, at least with regards to England as well. So let's have a look here. 1217A Parliament and its predecessor, the Magnum uh, Concilium, or the Great Council, now the House of Lords, rises in prominence and pays a role in the selection of the Queen or the monarchy. So this happened. So one, there is a physical change in the membership of the uh, establishment. And two, the French played a direct role in English politics. But then 1217 to 18, just before the barons, whose statuses still adorn the House of Lords, looking down on their successors, had forced King John to concede the Magna Carta. Henry III comes to the throne and swears to abide by the Great Charter or the Magna Charta, uh, Magna Carta issued by his father three years previous. The barons are prominent and some of them are in rebellion against the new king. Their leader is later is, is the later Louis VIII of France. In the 1460s, the War of the Roses led to physical destruction of the nobility in the battles. Almost the entire ancient nobility that traced its ancestry to the Normans was wiped out. With the later kings creating newer nobility that was more loyal to them. The principle that it is Parliament that decides who the monarch is dates from this period. So Parliament's still doing this. Henry the six is the only king of England to also have been crowned king of France and at Rhymes, and he was dis deposed um, in England in 1461. Edward the, the fourth of York claimed the throne, he was also the last king of England to have married a commoner before Prince Charles did with Diana, who has an Aquarian moon. Ugh. Um, so does the the energy of the United States. Okay, so his daughter married Henry the seventh of Lancaster, and was mother to Henry the eighth. He of the six wives, Henry the eighth. We know off with their head, right? Seventeen tens. Parliament again in the foreground, passing the Act of Settlement in seventeen o one, which defined the current succession to the English throne. Uh, followed by the Act of Union with Scotland in 1707. The arrival of William III of uh, Orange from the Netherlands brought many Dutch followers, some of whom were raised to the nobility. George I's ascension to the throne led to the first Prime Minister, initially a term of abuse, as all ministers were supposed to be equal, uh, because the new king couldn't speak English. The king and his prime minister, Sir Robert Walpole, communicated in broken Latin, apparently. Okay. There has been a long-term charge in a uh, change in power at each Pluto return. Okay. 1217 to 18, from the king to the barons. 1460, broadly towards parliament as we know it now, with a commons. 1709 to 10, the executive power starts moving towards the prime minister. Other examples, Spain, 19th of January, 1479, the most recent Pluto return around 1972 for Spain, <coughs> saw the dictator Franco gradually relinquishing power, nominating a monarch as successor to his regency in 1969 and handing over the prime ministership by 1973, and then he died in 1975. 
Russia, 28th of March, 1462. The most recent Pluto return was exact when Stalin died in early 1953. Previous Pluto returns was 1706. France, 19th of August, 843. Most recent Pluto return in 1821 saw the death of Napoleon on the exact aspect Previous Pluto returns, 1577, 1332, and 1088. Switzerland, 26th of May, uh, 1231. Most recent return was uh, joined the Council of Europe. Before that, it was 1726. Austria, 18th of October, 1221, was angling to join the EEC on the most recent Pluto return managed it six years later, and before that was 1714 and 1468. Scotland, March the 25th, 1005. The second Pluto return in 1745 saw the Jacobite Rebellion crushed by the English with savage repercussions. The next Pluto return in 1991 or 92 saw Alex Salmon take over leadership of the Scottish National Party which, later le which led later to its rise to power. The Pluto return first was 1252. So you can see when Pluto uh, makes its return, when Pluto moves forward, it, <laughs> major changes in the law happen, shifts in government structures, exposures of deep corruption, need to heal the past, civil war, power struggles can happen, right conflicts with other countries but also alliances with other countries we could lose our government altogether and create a new one uh there could be leaving agreements or partnerships with other countries as i said changes and overhauls to our economy uh changes when it comes to big business especially big tech um changes to our health systems are all in crisis unconventional leaders will go down death or overthrowing of unconventional corrupt leaders as well doesn't matter where they are but this is specifically here for the united states and the last time this happened we signed the declaration of independence what does that mean for you i know that some things have had to change since though i mean that's a long time ago things have changed since then right? But the pursuit of happiness, the freedom for every single person, the way that this country was going, it was going to be taken over, it was going to be kept by the crown. And the militia came back and rallied. When they had nothing, they were freezing, they were starving, they had nothing. They all decided they wanted a different way of life. And it started a whole different way of life. And we have our independent independence and being leaders of the free world. We have to be leaders of the free world. You know, no more corruption, no more sneaky deals, no more um, not being told the truth. The people need to know the truth. People need to know everything. The re rebalance of power dynamics needs to happen. The changing of allies. People need to rise up in, in independence, in freedom, in strength, in unity. The United States. Because if we don't, if it doesn't happen, you know, and then we're going to be owned by another country. Don't even need to say who that will be. And then what? So as a spiritual being of light and as a sovereign being of light, as you all are, my choice is to focus, really focus on how, you know, you individually would like your lives to be because you're going to be able to manifest as well and manifest and manifest. What is it going to be? Do we pick on everybody all the time for every little thing they think of, believe in, say, write? Do we care? You know what I mean? Like, is it really any of our business 
how somebody else lives their life. We're supposed to be the people. Should we make the government be held accountable for its lies, for its terrorizing of the world? Not just now, but how many times? How many times has this happened? Where the minorities have been wiped out. It happened in Australia too. You know, and not enough people would stand up against the tyranny. This is not how the United States was supposed to be. You know, this is not supposed to be this way for any country. This world needs to change worldwide. We need to be told the truth. We shouldn't be shut out. Parents are being shut out of, of schools now. Not even able to go and do the parent teacher meetings and stuff that we always, we're always able to do this. Why now? Why? What are they hiding from you? You know, why is all this, why is everything, you're not safe unless you do this and then you still might not be safe. So then you must, you know, make everybody else feel like they need to do it too. You know, just in case, when did all this happen? And this is part of the Pluto energy pushing through because when it does, it has to expose. And it's going to have to expose through, sadly, it takes a little while for people to wake up, right? It takes a little while. There are some people that sadly are never going to, you know, bless them, let them go on their way, whatever they want to do. But you can't consciously, with good conscience, hurt another individual and say, oh, that's okay because... You know, those people, where well, they've hurt our people for the longest time. When does it stop? Do you know what I mean? We've all been each other. We've all been slave and master. You need to remember that. It's not fair how you've been born. It's not fair how I've been born. We've all been born into circumstances that really nobody needed to know about. But now we all do. There are changes that are coming here. Now this is going to really kick off because it's at its exact conjunction in Capricorn at the exact time that it did before in the natal chart of the United States, which it kind of explained there a little bit, where all of a sudden, you know, things changed. You know, the United States or the Continental Army was losing. Washington was losing. And suddenly it all turned. And who came? French. The French came to help us. All of a sudden it was like we were able to take a breath, you know, and things changed. And the people got together, the, the founding fathers, and said, look, we need to do this. We need to make sure that this never can happen again, that the corrupt can never take over this country again. And here it is. What's going to happen from that? Yes, we might not agree with how uh, it was written back then and how things were done. But nevertheless, there are people that were put into positions of power on the provision that they are going to follow that constitution. They're not going to bend the rules to suit themselves and then nothing is happening, nothing is done. They can't, you can't just bend the rules when you feel like it and then not be held accountable for things. You can't change what you've, just, what you've already said that you are going to uphold. You can't just say, okay, but I don't like that part. So, you know, I'm just going to just mix and blur the lines here. That's what, what you were told to do. And if there needs to be a reform, and, you know, if the people come together and we decide what rules we want to have for our societies, we want to be able to visit our family. Many of us have been grounded here, can't go anywhere. Four years now it's coming up for me, you know, for, for anyone to be able to go back and forth because unless you have money for their quarantine, you, you can't go anywhere. Who's got $10,000 sitting around right now? Right? And in reality, in reality, 
people are you know kept apart for no real reason especially now as we're moving into you know two years after the fact and they're still doing this crap pluto won't let it happen whatever your beliefs are wherever you feel there is wrong and if it truly is wrong okay so if you've been told that some certain person or politician or whatever is corrupt they're dark they're doing all of this you know sexual things with kids and you've been told all of this stuff and you've really believed it if that's true nothing is going to be escaping the planet pluto in it doing its thing especially with Eris right there if that's true but if it's not okay if it's not then the people that are spreading that psych psychological warfare and making you fear things and making you turn those people are also going to be exposed it goes with the work that i do if if there is anyone that is doing spiritual work and they're full of crap okay and they're really dark in nature and they're creating spells against people and feeding into all the anger and fear and all that sort of stuff they will be exposed <laughs> i mean in a big way right i should open this window for this fly <laughs> right people are going to be explode exposed in in some of the most major kinds of ways where before they've been able to cover it up let's say that there's been a big lie told to the world and the media have kept it going okay made it worse than what it is fudged the numbers told you it was one thing when it was something else let's just say all of that is true right let's just say all of that is true all of that is coming down then what because you're not going to be able to trust in the news in the media you're not going to be able to trust in elections you're not going to be able to trust because it's all been rubbish it's all been construed and you know made this this group of people believe this thing and this group of people believe this bit and these people are lower class so we're going to just wipe them out we're just going to make it so difficult for them that we don't have to worry about them then and we're just going to keep the elite going that is going to be destroyed not from uh us coming around there and you know fighting with them it's just going to be destroyed be destroyed because of the planetary you know that you can't hide from this planet it, it's going to affect all of us we've been going through all of it for so long now right purging releasing healing ascending purging releasing healing ascending we the people have been doing the work right what has the other people been doing taking getting rich on people's suffering telling lies to see how many people will believe it getting alliances with countries that are extremely dangerous stopping us from having any kind of freedoms and seeing that that was easily done and doing more oh well they believe that we've uh kept that going yes there is some kind of thing going on but it's not as bad as what we've made it out to be just imagine this is true for just a second right and we've got away with it and we've kept them unidentifiable because of these things that they've had to wear and then they don't and then they do and then they don't and then they do so we're messing with their minds and then we're going to put the next thing on them which they will say okay then I, I just want to be free I just want to get out of this thing so so yeah I'll, I'll just do whatever you want and then I'm gonna go around because I've done it and you're not doing it and I'm a you know I've done this now and I'm gonna hate on you when did this ever happen before if you weren't being manipulated into something dark you wouldn't be doing it that's just that's just what it is so that dark agenda whether it's come from here 
whether it's come from a lab, whether it's come from a Russia thing, whether it's come from Australia and the dark tunnels that are there, whether it's come, doesn't matter where. Every single one of them are going down. Every single person that has been corrupt in our greatest time of need is going down. It, it, there's no choice in the matter. There's no hiding from it because Pluto leaves no stone unturned. It doesn't matter where they think they can hide, fly off to, dig an underground tunnel and run to, too much has already occurred. Too much has already happened. And I, for one, I can't, I, I will not stand anyone being stepped on. It doesn't matter who you are, what you believe in, who you voted for. I couldn't give a crap. It's about integrity. It's about truth. It doesn't matter. That blue, red thing, both need to be demolished. Sorry, corruption everywhere. Again, they will all be found out. When I heard about the Pluto thing, now, I had heard bits and pieces about it being in the signs and being in the stars and being in the things about the C-19 and that it was all going to be different and things were really changing. And transformation was happening. And I, I, mean, I knew about it, but when I really read about it and then you go into uh, like I didn't do it here, but if you went into the Australian history of it, it was when certain prime ministers started coming forward when they left would be the end of the uh of the cycle and they would leave or they would die or something would happen right things would seem things would be dire basically for that person and then you look at the zodiacs of of each of the people you look at the zodiac uh so if you if you know that the birth of the united states is uh you know 1776 july 4th then you can look up you can look up the astrology of the United States and see the trajectory of how things are happening. So interesting, right? And this led me to looking at this eye opening transformative, you know, energy here when I was doing the 2022 readings. I'm like something is leading me to look at the overall picture, you know, of how the planets are going to move. And holy, it just opened up this wormhole when I heard that Pluto was sitting and for the first time since his birth, the birth of a nation was going to be sitting back there in February, 2022, actually uh, the 20th. So, you know, in Australia, we'd say 22, uh, <laughs> uh, 20, 20, see how that's like just shunk. And here we say two, um, 20, 2022. So it's like, it's, you know, all these twos are here, not, not, you know, just so amazing. And it brings the changes. It brings the overhauls. It brings the big tech changes as well, because there's different technology. There's different things that are going to come out, different platforms that people are going to have. There's going to be uh, an uprising of the people and, you know, you know, fight, and people will fight for those, even if they're not even on the same team, so to speak because we're gonna get so sick of it. Because more and more and more information, as I was saying, has no choice but to come out. So when you, when you figure out that something that you've believed in for a really long time, it's been complete and utter BS, you're gonna be a little bit annoyed. Okay, let's just say angry. You're gonna be that, you're gonna be really upset because it's caused divisions with friends and, and people and platforms and, you know, people have lost their livelihoods because of all this, because of their beliefs and their shoo, standing firm in it. So it doesn't matter what you believe or whose side you're on or whatever you think it is. A lie is a lie is a lie. And whoever's telling it is in trouble because you will not be able to be swept under the carpet. And the first thing is, is that the media will begin to change things. The media is going to start coming out because otherwise they're going to be in a lot of trouble. All right, on all platforms, doesn't matter. If you watch CNN or if you watch uh, Newsmax, if someone's been full of BS in, in there and telling you stories, they're gone. And this is why I had to do this reading, uh, well, reading message, whatever it is today. 
I really had to because we are going through it already. I think the worst of the worst. There's still going to be some other stuff because when we, when everybody figures everything out and like really figures it all out, and it will start happening in the first six months of next year, people will really figure everything out, and there will be, you know, a fallback because of that. There will be. So your uh, focus is going to have to be on moving forward. Okay. Your focus is going to have to be on the goodness, doing things from integrity, from the heart, doing the right thing, having manners, opening the doors for people and stuff, standing up when there's elderly on the bus, whatever happened to that, sitting there on their phones and stuff. I never heard anything like it. It's just called manners, having manners again, being kind, you know, coming together like that. Don't people want people to be kind to each other? You know, isn't that the basis of it? Fairness and justice is kindness and understanding, no matter your creed, no matter your race, where you came from. Doesn't, shouldn't it be like that? So you've got to be like that, no matter what. Someone be a jerk to you, you don't have to be a jerk back to them. You know, it's all about changing from within us. Because this will be the very thing. It doesn't sound like much, but it will be the very thing that transforms us into an even better world than we had before the C-19. Way better. It needed to change. This was, this was needed, regardless of what we think. And it challenges the US to face up to its dark side and to expose any corruption. We have a remedy. We have to remedy the past so we can create a brighter future. We have to change the way things are done. And this has been said time and time again. And I will talk more um, if you want me to. Um, there are other aspects we can look into with this Pluto, especially as it starts to come forward uh, a little bit, we're getting a little bit to the height of it uh, now uh, as well, uh, 2022 to 2024. Okay, um, this is coming up and so the reason that this chart is used is because it determined to be the birth of the current laws and the beliefs of the United States and the document that was signed that day. Um, so this is the Pluto return 2022 to 2024. It's going to be exactly the same position that it was in uh, July 4th, 1776. Does it mean anything to you? You know, it really means a lot to me. And this is why I made this um, video today. And I hope that uh, this has helped you. Okay. I um, will, I'm always available. Of course, you can connect with me to have your own um, reading on just about any subject that you want and uh, extra information. And you can have your own 2022 reading. And if you put in the code 10 at my website, you'll get 10% off. So that's for everybody, whoever's watching. Patrons, you also always get discounts. But I want to give uh, this so you can get it early. It does take me a little bit of a while to do your reading. I will say that you, you want to allow at least a week uh, to get your reading back um, because there's so many things that I do for you for this 2022 reading. Okay. So I will see you guys really, really soon. I'm, I'm glad if you made it this far. Thank you so much. <laughs> I hope that this was interesting uh, for you and uh, brings the fire back into your belly that things can change. Okay. There's hope. There's light at the end of the tunnel, everyone. And we've got to start focusing on that. Become the leaders of lights. As I explained before, my platform should be up by the beginning of the year to teach you everything you need to know in business, in life, in spirituality, to start your own program or start your own um, journey with your own business, whatever you want to do, okay? So sending lots of love to you all. Thank you for listening. Uh, many, many blessings. Bye for now, everyone.